you know, the years you have to spend in college. But this is something, I, I don't understand why some people will cut it down to three years, uh, from four years to three years. College, this is your golden time. I mean, <laughs> this is, you know, the only precious four years in the kid's life that you can, you know, you, you don't have any financial responsibility and you can be exposed to all people around the world. Why cut it down to three? I don't get it. But, but there are people who do it, probably out of financial uh, considerations. But what a pity. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't get yet the philosophy behind that decision to cut it down to four years, uh, three years. Let's move on. And that's the uh, difference for the information of parents. This is the, uh, the honors or awards, the award certificate you receive from uh, College Board. You have AP Scholar, three subjects or more with a grade of three or higher. And AP Scholar with honor, four subjects or more with a grade of three or higher and with an average grade of 3.25 or higher. AP Scholar with distinction, five subjects, or more with a grade of three or higher, and with an average grade of 3.5 or higher. And then you have state AP Scholar, only two students. That, that's probably the highest honor. I think it's, you know, even rarer than the national AP scholar because you only have two from each state. One, one girl, one boy. It's so hard to get this on. Yeah, AP award certificate. It's not PSAT. We all know PSAT that you take in your junior year carries with it the potential of getting National Merit Scholarship. I think it's probably 2,000 in the past few years. Uh, but they may be matched, you know. The fund may be matched by your parents' company. There are companies who have the policy of matching you know, the, the Merit Scholarship. But AP Award uh, do not carry any scholarship. But the records will be submitted to colleges as part of your application profile. It's very important. Let's go on. IP. IP was uh, operated or administrated by UNESCO. I think it's a uh, United Nations economic and social uh, education uh, yeah. uh, organization uh, cultural, cultural organization cultural. yes cultural. united nation education <coughs> social scientific. and cultural scientific science, science. science. Okay. yeah cultural. unesco uh, the mm. it's in geneva switzerland so that's uh, ip let's move on This is a, IP follows a more traditional uh, philosophy for education that students should be encouraged to pursue his education with a broad range of subjects. Students should be able to make connections among various subjects. AP is more specific on a certain area. So comparatively, AP has more focus or in-depth focus or concentration on one subject. IB has a broader range. A lot of writing uh, for IB courses. And AP basically is just you know, a, a college course devoted to high school. And IB is not modeled on any country's educational system. It has its own unique curriculum that attempts to combine the merits 
on the mainstream curricula of advanced countries. Although we don't know advanced countries, probably uh, European and North American. Yeah. Probably Australia, New Zealand, Japan. Yeah, I think those are considered advanced countries. Let's move on. Thank you. And these are the reasons why AP, IB scores are important for the following reasons. They serve to strengthen your GPA. We mentioned that earlier. They point to a student's academic aptitude or potential. <coughs> Especially if you're already focused on a certain path of career, then the AP or IB courses you have taken should have a certain propensity or orientation in that direction. Three, they demonstrate a student's ability and willingness to take challenges. That's a very important factor. And the num number four is something many, many of you disregard. You don't care. Differences between AB and IB programs. IB courses have to be taken in a designated school, while AP can be taken at school, online, or at home. As long as you want, you take the exam, that's fine. So it's very flexible. AP, very flexible. If you don't, if you cannot squeeze in your schedule, then you can spend summer, you know, uh, taking an AP course online. Just take the, the final exam, that will be fine. And there are people who do that. Second, uh, it actually takes four years of high school for a student to complete the I IB, it's not IM, IB program. The first two years, the student takes pre-IB courses, and the last two years, IB courses. So you complete your IB uh, program in four years. As for AP, we are so familiar with AP courses. You can take it anytime. Usually, you know, it's a... Uh, one or two courses the first year, two courses, or probably three. I don't know about Wharton. I heard that you know, people are taking three or four already in the second year. And then four or five in your junior year, and four or five in your senior. Some people take six. I heard an extreme case is seven. Thank you. So that you know, it's okay. So I, I can be free. <laughs> this would be nice. Thank you. That's the. Uh, and this is uh, the third difference. The IB program includes some AP courses, but not the other way around. Some people, some students may ask. It's the other way around or the other way around. Um, there's a difference. In America, we use it very often. In Britain, they use round more often than around. It, there's a difference, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the, the same word, round, around, basically the same. Number four, an AP exam includes both multiple choice items and responses in passages. You have to write. The high score is five, and an IB exam requires responses in passages and really multiple choice items. IB actually follows the more traditional European education. They have just, you know, one exam at the end of the year. Those who are not determined, or those who are, do not have that aptitude, they would drop. I mean, 70, 80 percent of the drop, and the really interested, the really talented would survive at the end. We call that uh, an education for aristocracy or the elite. American education is more, you know, one quiz after another, one test after another. It's for technicians, engineers, people who are more, you know, mechanically or, you know, oriented. There's a difference between the two. And AP courses seems to be, you know, uh, more representative of the American education. 
very practical, pragmatic, <coughs> useful, down to earth. And uh, IB process tends to be more like a, the Euro European model of education. Let's move on. Five. The IB program provides a comprehensive and extensive curriculum, while most AP courses provide in depth coverage of specific subjects. In other words, an AP course provides a more detailed approach to a certain subject, while an IP course is more challenging in range. It's broad range. You have to make, again, connections. And this is uh, just no facts, opinions, please. Just opinions. For the top 20 most selected schools, 7 to 12 A APs. Many people are, you know, took more than 12. Many students. And, but, you know, you should, the, the core courses, English, Mathematics, Science, History, and Foreign Language, you need to take one in each. And then the others may be related to your expected career or path or profession. This is the freshman year. Uh, we can actually skip this. Yeah. And then uh, you can take a look. I I'll read it anyway. Sophomore year, take one to three AP classes. Consider adding a more challenging AP class like world history or US history, and one or two less de demanding APs. Continue to take honors courses as possible in your core class. That's actually, I think, what most of us have been doing. We have been doing this. Junior year, based on your experience and scores from freshman and sophomore year, start taking APs in core classes. For example, AP English, usually it's uh, language arts, because uh, usually AP language arts first, AP literature later. And if you have more time, probably college English. Some schools have college English. Um, AP calculus, AP biology, and take as many as you can handle without spreading yourself thin. And make sure that you will have time to study for the SAT or ACT this year. An Ivy League hopeful might take three to five AP classes, while if you are aiming for less selective schools, two to four would be enough. And senior year, basically this is the first semester. I think the second semester of your senior year, you just let go. You have already received, you know, the letter of admission from the school. So have a good time. Okay. That's a very important piece of advice. Don't give in to peer pressure just because you have a friend who has taken 10 AP exams. Doesn't mean that. This sentence is from, uh, I copied it from uh, some information sheet. And um, this is a syntax problem, huh? Because just because you have a friend who has taken AP, 10 AP exams does not mean just because it's not a subject. It's a, it's a clause introduced by a secondary, you know, a, we call it subordinating conjunction. It cannot serve as, yeah. you should say in formal writing, that you have a friend who has taken 10 AP exams does not mean you have to do the same. That should be the right, correct writing. Many of you know already. College applications are considered holistic. This is an important word, holistic, as a whole. Everything combined. So it's important to keep your overall a GPA scores and activities intact. Do not be obsessed with AP courses, the pure number of AP courses. It may not pay off at the end. And this is the third topic for 
today's presentation. Let me see uh, how much time we have. We have 20 minutes, maybe more. And this is uh, something I recommend. You need to talk. You need to keep the topics in your mind. And whenever you have time, you need to think about those topics. One or two at a time, probably. Talk with your friends. Talk with your parents. Talk with your relatives. Talk with your counselor. What do you think about this? Let's move on. Probably we can be more specific. This is a topic from common application. The first one. Some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If it is sounds like you, then please share your story. Share your story. Why or how this is so important to you. For instance, someone is so interested and spends so much time. You know, in, a, in your resume, you listed in dancing. Why dancing is so important? What is meaningful in this activity? How you relate dancing to your goal in your life? Probably you're not going to be a dancer in the future, professional dancer, but why spending so much time in dance? Come up with some explanation. Remember a, a British poet, uh, Yeats, anyone heard of him? Who said that, you know, who come up, who come up with two images of wholeness, that in which the form and content, form and content are combined into one, and this poet came up with two images. One is a dancer. When you are dancing, the form and the content are unified. They are the same. The two things. The other is a tree, a blooming tree, standing there. The content and the form are in unity. Maybe you should say something about that. Well, you know, what is the significance of dance? How does it help you understand your world better, or the meaning of life better, or how it provides you with a community you know, that is meaningful? You, you need to. Uh, are we in the? Okay. No, uh, did Did you jump? Uh, no, no, I went back. And okay. Was... And that's a. Uh... Oh no. No. Still go back. Yeah. We, we, uh, let us stay on that page uh, until. So that that should be interest, is it? And how about the background? Would you consider yourselves always as someone from Atlanta? Why Atlanta is so meaningful to you? What happened in your childhood contributes to what you are today? That, that could be something we can explore, isn't it? The people you met, the events that took place, the occurrences that were meaningful. Integrate these into your writing. Unless you have the urge to say something, don't write your college essay. Until you have an urge to say what, what you have to say. Don't treat it as a homework assignment. It will be something mechanical. You, you, you know, it will not shine. You see, they have, you know, it will drive you crazy. They have a few thousand essays to read for each person. You want to stand out. You don't 
you, and actually, you know, the language will tell by itself whether you are actually having something to say or to express, or you are just, you know, dealing, you know, with your assi with your uh, college application that I said as an assignment, something you have to do. You you need to have something to share. Probably, you know, the audience may not be the officer, it may be your friend. I remember there's a topic about what you want to tell your roommate. That there's a topic like that. So what would you what would you tell your roommate about yourself? What kind of person you are? What you know, what things that drive you crazy, mad, what things that make you, you know, alive? Say something. So this is a very, actually very broad topic. This is the first, first topic for college, uh, for the common application, uh, application essay, the first topic. It actually includes everything. Anything you want to say, you know, you can start with this. Talent, interest, identity, background. Let's move on. <clears throat> and this is also very important because it has something to do with adulthood or maturity. What do you think is the benchmark that indicates a transition, you know, from your teenage years to adulthood? Is it re responsibility, your sense of responsibility, or it might be your realization of the ambivalence of life? Sometimes it's so very hard to tell the difference between what is right and what is wrong. And you are not in a hurry to decide. That's a sign of maturity. It does not mean that you don't care. It means you care so much that you, you suspend your judgment. You don't want to come into a hasty judgment. That might be a mark of maturity. I say it in your essay. That, that might be something very good for you to explore, to, to uh, talk to your parents to talk to your best friends, your uncles, aunts, maybe. 